Good afternoon, folks. Today, we're going to talk about mind your own damn business. And we're going to talk about how that is really the way we all should be living in America. But as noble a thought as that is, the American people can't rely on everybody just minding their own damn business. So first of all, let me talk to you about your inalienable rights, your right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that covers just about everything. It covers your right to choose your own health care. It covers your right to choose who you want to marry and when you want to marry. It, it includes your right to choose what books you want to read. It's your right, pretty broadly stated, to live your life. And an inalienable right is a right that cannot be taken away or given away. Your right cannot be taken away by a majority vote, by legislation, or by executive command. Period. End of story. But you know what? Since the beginning, people have had their rights taken away in the United States. Okay? They have, people have used the system to do that. People have used the courts to do that in violation of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. So years ago, when we had, you know, the Newt Gingriches and Pat Robinson and the Morrow Majority and Richard Nixon and all of those guys, I was out there warning people about how people do not mind their own business. I was warning people about the rise of people like Donald Trump, about the rise of people like you know, Michelle Bachman and her dominionism routine, warning people about the fact that Christian nationalism was going to someday take over the GOP, and they did. So here's where we are in America. I would feel confident that if we had nothing but Democratic Party rule for the next hundred years that we could live in the safety of people minding their own business. But I don't think we can rely on that because I don't think the GOP is ever going to go away. And in fact, the GOP will eventually rebuild itself. And even when it was not under the guise of Donald Trump or under the command of Donald Trump, it insinuated itself, it, itself into people's personal lives. Okay. Roe was passed by the Supreme Court in 73. By 1975, the Republicans were already passing the Hyde Amendment that prevented the government from funding abortions, which meant that poor people were left out in the cold. Okay? We have legislation that has been, gerrymandering has been going on forever. Not, not just under Trump, it's, it's been worse under him, but it's been going on forever. Okay? And no one should be able to take away the right of people's voting. Okay, that's totally un-American and totally unconstitutional. All right, let's get that straightened out. Back when George W. Bush was president, he was considering a constitutional amendment that would define marriages between one man and one woman. The only reason that didn't happen was because Laura Bush talked them out of it because they have gay friends. You know, I love to mind my own business. I have neighbors right in my building. I have no idea what they do in their personal lives. I talk to them in the hallway. I'm friends with them. It's not for me to judge. And by the way, let me insert this before I get into the whole reason for this video. There will be Christians out there who tell you that they're here to carry out what God would want everybody to do. You know, people like, you know, uh, I can't even remember her name. The woman, I forget what state she was from, maybe Tennessee, who refused to give out marriage certificates to gay couples because it was against her religion. Well, I suggest to you that maybe you find another job. There is no reason why she should be able to go to court and stop that process. There's no reason why when you when you have issues like health care, like abortion is health care, no matter what anyone's telling you, why we should have to get it on a ballot. People should not be able to vote on your rights. That's un-American. We all should have the same rights. 
Okay. Donald Trump, who wants to put through an executive order to basically pretend that transgender people don't exist, that should be illegal. That is infringing on an inalienable right. It is not the government's role to insinuate itself into the private lives of people who live in this country, pay taxes in this country, and expect to be able to live freely. If they are not harming anyone else, it is none of your business. But we can't count on that because we are always going to have the Lauren Boberts and the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Jim Jordans and the the uh, J.D. Vances and the Donald Trumps trying to tell you how to live your life. What books to read, who you can marry, and whether or not you have the right to an abortion, even when it's a medical emergency. So what I'm suggesting to you is this. Once we get rid of these cretins, and I mean, this is going to be more than one cycle because some of these guys will be holdovers till the next election. All right. Once we get rid of these people and we get somebody rational in office like Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, we need to start pushing for a constitutional amendment that solidifies everybody's rights in this country. We need all the verbiage in there, all the protection. We need it to be ironclad and unassailable. It needs to be written by somebody who knows the court system in and out and knows the civil rights business in and out. So it can never be the subject of anyone's attack ever again so that the Supreme Court doesn't get to weigh in on it. It's great to say you're going to codify Roe. We're going to put it into law and let's get that done. But understand this, without some kind of further protection, there can be an administration that may be a far right administration that can repeal that law. None of these laws should be repealable. Your rights should be your rights. And we should not be able to use the legislative branch to overturn anybody's rights. In fact, the court system, the legislation passed in this country, our government, our elected representatives should not ever use the government to oppress other people. And I don't care if you are a constituent who doesn't like the fact that there may be a gay flag hanging on someone's house. Your elected representative should be able to say to you, mind your own damn business. So here's what I'm asking. Anybody out there who wants to help me push for this should send me an email at deb.delapiana at gmail.com. Now, I'm not going to spell that all out for you because I'm going to put that right in the body of this video. The one that goes up on YouTube will have it in the description. The one that goes up on TikTok, I'm simply going to put it in the comments. If you want to get involved, if you want to make sure that going forward, we force our elected officials to talk about the issues that all people care about, like taxes, putting food on the table, price gouging. If we can get them to focus on policy rather than insinuating themselves into people's personal lives, then we are a leg up on this, okay? I hope you guys have an excellent afternoon. I hope you guys mind your own damn business and I'll talk to you soon.